In my life, I have built over 10 bikes over the last couple of years. And whenever I go onto a new project, I'm always super excited and I just cannot wait to finish it. But this build took a little bit longer than I expected because it took exactly seven months for me to finish it. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Shells and welcome back to my cycling YouTube channel. In today's video, we're taking a look at my finally finished tandem. This bike took so long to build because there has been so much problems throughout the build. So much wrong parts, so much surprise about it. Everything went wrong, everything went bad. But after a long time, lots of hours, perseverance, and just motivation to finally finish the build, well, here I am seven months later. And in this video, we're not gonna go on the ride today. In this video, I wanna show you guys everything that I bought that was wrong, how much money I lost building this bike, buying parts that were not fitting. And I'm gonna show you all the sketchy and innovative thing about this bike. All right, so here's a full bag of everything wrong that I bought. So first of all, the biggest mistake of this build in is this MV fork that I paid 350 US dollar. Um, I wanted a carbon fork for this build, but turns out this one was tapered and the headset here was only taking straight forks. But instead I went with a surly fork. I bought a carbon seat post for Gabriel in the rear, but I bought this one from Amazon. It was super cheap. And then the reason why it was super cheap is because the sizing is wrong and it actually don't fit in the 27 point something millimeters. I've bought two 203 mil disc rotors because I wanted to go wide, the bigger the better. But turns out the disc brake calipers that I got don't even fit those size. I've bought not one, not two, but three wrong rear axle transformations. So since I'm running a regular rear wheel on the Tandem and the Titan is a wider size, uh, I couldn't figure out which adapter was I needed. And the worst part about them is the time I wasted trying to make them fit. Next, more money that I lost on this bike build is this brakes adapters um, because I really wanted to add the adapters, but it just did not fit. And next, I have an extra post mount brake and that don't fit the front fork. But the thing worse than losing money on parts that you're not gonna use is losing so much damn time trying to make it work. And to be honest, this build probably took me 30, if not 40 hours of work because there was always something that was not working. But before showing you guys a few of the problems that I came up and I solved, I wanna give a little shout out here to the guys at FSA. So FSA provided the tandem cranks. And what is funny about this story is, I was like, I'm gonna message my guys at FSA. I'm gonna request if they have parts for this build. And they were super down for it because who builds a tandem? It's not a lot of people who does it. So they were able to provide the crank. This is a super nice, well machine crank. It's from, it's the SLK series. And what's great about it is you have your crank on the front, which is on the left side. And in the rear, it's chain ring on the right and chain rings on the left. So big shout out to FSA. Without them, I would not have been able to build the tent. So moving on to the problems building this bike, we're gonna, we're gonna start at the front of the bike and go make our way through the rear. But the downside going with this fork is this brake calipers is on a flat mount system and flat mount only allows up to 160 mil disc. Another big challenge with this bike was the headset bearings and the headset in general. The thing is, I, when I got the frame, it was chipped down. There was nothing with the frame. So I went on this website called Cannondale Spare Parts, but it took two months to arrive. Thank God they actually fit because otherwise, I don't even know if I would have been able to find them anywhere else. So now another big challenge I was facing was with the gearing because it is not a standard way to route cables. So as you can see here, there are tie wraps, yes. And let me explain you how did I fix it. So basically there, there was this white stopper and my cable was just sliding through and I was not able to get any tension from it. So what I had to do was to find a way to keep that black 
housing cable before this white stopper. So we have a first tie wrap that is closed very small that actually just blocks the black cable housing to slide through. And we have a second tie wrap that just keep the black housing right next to the frame. And the third one is actually keeping the brake cable next to the frame. So the brake cable is going under it. The brake cable is just the housing that goes all the way. The next challenge I was facing was to also source this part right here. So as you can see here, right under the frame, there is the routing. And let me tell you guys, finding routing for a tandem that was built in 2007, it was almost impossible. But again, Tandel spare parts added. It just took a long time to arrive, but I was able to actually route my rear cable. As you can see, there's also space for the front derailleur cable, and I'm gonna explain you why I don't have it yet on. Next, we need to talk about this thing that I've never saw on a bike, and it's called an eccentric bottom bracket. So what an eccentric BB is, is basically it goes inside of this bigger hole, and what it do is, when, is to put chain tension on the other side. So when you put your chain on and you want to add tension, the BB rotate inside of the frame to add tension on the other side. Difficult to figure out how to install it and how to make it work, but now I got it to work. But another problem here was to install the BSC bottom bracket. Here I feel that I have done something wrong. Too much space here on this side and on, to, and on the other side. I don't know what to do and how to fix it. Feel there's still a problem, but it pedals, it works. <laughs> Next, we need to talk about my seat clamp. And as you can see, uh, this is a front derailleur clamp that I decided to put it there. So the thing is, when I bought this one, it was the wrong size for the rear seat post. Uh, so I just figured out that it was the exact same size for the front one. So I just decided to add it here and it just works perfectly. Right next to it, we have a stonker stem. And if you have never seen that, uh, it, it's a stem that is for the rear person. It holds itself to the seat post of the captain in front. And uh, this one was very easy to find. It was on Amazon and it was like about $100. So not that bad. And now moving on to the back drive train, we have a very sketchy thing. And I got to admit here, we have a DI2 derailleur that goes here. It's in this open position. So all it actually does, it's more like a, a chain catcher. So the chain cannot fall on the inside or the outside. Moving on to the derailleur, I haven't mentioned, but I decided to go super budget and I installed a Sensei Empire Element Speed. And some of you guys asked me some long-term review about this unit. Uh, to be honest, it still works perfectly fine. It, it shift great, it's reliable. Again, another part that was not within the tandem was the derailleur hanger. And now we need to talk about the brakes. So the brakes had lots of issue with them. It was the longest and the last problem that I solved. So starting from the front here, as you can see, I have another very budget brake system. It's a, called a Z-Race that I had on AliExpress. It was not that expensive, but it's a mechanical cable actuated disc brake, but I think there's hydraulic inside, so the piston are compressing very well. And to be honest, I was very surprised with the strength and the quality that this disc brake caliper provide. I just wish I the disc in front was maybe a 180, if not a 200, but that will maybe be for some future improvement. And now for the rear, this is something I had another huge issue with this bike, is here we have an Avid disc brake caliper, and this is a post mount, because this frame is post mount, and as you, I don't know if you can see, I, no, I guess you cannot see, but basically the disc brake caliper was too much on the outside and I was not able to center the disc properly. So I had to fidget and come up with a lot of solution to make it work. So the first solution I came up with was I, on the other brake, I just drilled it so much right next to the side here. So I was able to push the disc brake caliper a bit more inside. And another solution I came up with to move the wheel a bit more on the other side is I put a washer right here. It's a tiny, tiny, about one or two millimeter washer right in between the frame and the start of the cassette is exactly centered with the disc rotor here. So when we're spinning, it's not rubbing and it is very good offer better braking power because the disc is centered and the mechanical disc is working very well. So something we realized after our first ride that I still haven't had the time to change it is the tires. So I thought it was funny to keep gravel bike tires onto this tandem so we could go off-road. But what we realized is that these tires, as soon as we left the middle 
of it, as soon as we were going more on the side walls, it was losing a lot of traction and a lot of stability, it was really shaking the bike. So we think that adding just a regular road tire, maybe a 28 or a 32, will just be a lot better, it will be a lot more stable. The thing that we decided to do here is we are not using approved tandem wheels, we are actually using gravel wheels from FSA, so these are the SLK AGX, they are a super good set of gravel wheels, super solid, super reliable, but because of its strength and its reliability, we decided to put it on the tandem, even though we are pushing a little bit the weight limit on these wheels, I am sure that it will hold up perfectly our weight. All right guys, so that's it for the overview of the tandem and uh, even though it took so much time, so much money, so much effort, I am so glad that I finally built this bike because it will just make it a lot more enjoyable for Gabrielle and I to go on rides together. That means I can go my pace, I can go my strength, I can go all out, I can do threshold, I can do intervals, and all of that without dropping my girlfriend. So we can actually stay together, have a good time on the bike, and just explore and have fun together on this bicycle. So what's next now for this project? Well, I have a few crazy ideas. Maybe go on a ride with some buddies. Maybe have Tristan in the back, go for KOMs, go at the CGV, just have fun with the tandem because this bike is built to have fun with my friends, with my girlfriends, and just to find another way to enjoy even more cycling because having another bike in your quiver is the best thing in the world. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already. And my name is Charles, and I will see you on the road or to the next video. Peace.